Harry. What are you doing here? I didn't know you worked on Sunday. I don't. Well, now. I guess I came at the wrong time. Yeah, Barney. I'm afraid you did. Put that gun away. You don't have the guts. Now, don't make things worse for yourself than they already are. Get out of the way, Barney. I will not. I said move. You put that gun and books down. Get out of my way. Put that gun down. it was no big deal. No crises on the home front. No one's civil rights were in jeopardy. Just an old-fashioned exchange. The boss told me to hand Harry Grant a bag full of money, and Harry would give me the books of a swindler in return. Hmm, this could be a vacation. The door is open. Come on in. What's this? Up and then off the house. You're kidding. The first time in my life. <laughs> Sit it down over here. No kidding. How do you like that? Oh. All <laughs> yeah, right, kid. Go ahead. Keep it. What do you think I am, Rockefeller? It's a dollar. I know. Nash here. Yeah, hey, I got the key. The key to success. The money's uh, waiting for you. Briefcase full of fifties. Five hundred thousand dollars. Well, I know you have to be careful. Uh, listen, I'll meet you anywhere you want. Spyglass, yeah. I know exactly where it is. But look, you call me when you're ready. And if I'm not here, I'll uh, check in with the desk every hour. Right. Harry Grant had stolen the books of Sadler International Investments. Books which would show that Sadler International owed the U.S. government at least $5 million in back taxes. The government was paying Harry a 10% informer's fee. So, sometime in the next 48 hours, Harry was going to leave a message for me. The message was spyglass. One word. As soon as I got it, I'd meet him at a place that only he and I knew. And we'd exchange the storage locker key for a baggage check. My key would give him $500,000. His baggage check would be for the books. Fast, clean, efficient. 
if Sadler's men didn't catch up with Harry first. Hi. Will it be? Me a scotch on the rocks. Huh? Right. Make that a double. A double. Mm. I thought it was someone who looked like her. And when the tough guy came in and she took off, I knew it was Diana. And she was in trouble. And trouble was her middle name. After three years, I had almost stopped thinking about her. She finally became just an old girlfriend. But seeing a couple of goons trying to knock her around, the old fire flared up. I had to see her. I had to talk to her. Do you have a Miss St. James staying here? Nothing serious. Uh, yes, we do. Room I'll call the desk clerk. Diana, we've been friends for a long time. I can't forget the years that we had together. Now, I see two dumb, dumb hoodlums beating up on you. I hear one hood downstairs say to you that the boss wants to get you back. Now, who's the boss? Very generous man. I can see that. This is all his, huh? Including me. Now that you know, are you happy? You happy? Yes. Well, if you're so happy, how come you're running? I was with him and some friends. He put me down in front of him. So we had a quarrel, and I left. Marty, he's liable to come here at any minute. If he finds you... Don't worry about it. I'll hide under the bed. It's me I'm worried about. I've seen what he's done to other women. If he should come here and, and thinks I'm cheating on him... Please 
Yes? Yes, it's all right. Yes, Charles, I'll be here. That was him. Listen. I know a place in Sausalito. Beautiful hotel on the hillside overlooking the bay. They'll never find us there. We wasted three years. peaceful drive over the bridge to Sausalito. We both looked forward to the time alone together, without her friends bothering us. Hey, driver, pull over to that phone booth over there. Right. Business, honey, I gotta call the hotel. This is Montgomery Nash, 1404. Any messages? Uh, just one moment, Mr. Nash. Yes, sir. The caller didn't leave his name. The message is spyglass, 5 p.m. sharp. I hope that's clear, sir. Thanks. I have to take care of some business later. For how long? Oh, not long. Still be secret government business? Another woman. She can have what's left. Let's go. Yes, sir. Make a date, same time, same place, three years from now? No, thanks. Then what happens next? What do you want to have? You're still the same realist, huh? Love can't buy money. An hour at a time, Monty. Can't we play it that way? So I can sit around and wait for you to say again I'm sorry? Maybe I won't say it this time. Monty. Looks like your boyfriend isn't going to leave you alone, sweetheart. Come on, let's go. I'm getting tired of this. Some fellas. Mister, you're really beginning to get my hair. So what else is new? This is her last chance. You tell her. The last chance for what? 
Well, if she wants to stay alive, I think it's better that she goes with us. <laughs> She's not going anywhere. And you can tell your boss that I said so, Money Nash. I will. I'll tell him exactly that. Now listen, if I ever see you two guys again, so help me, you'll wind up in wheelchairs. Now take a walk. Can I have the keys? Is that what you did to Fitzgerald and Conway? Spend the whole army out. Well, by that time, we'll be long gone. Yeah, who says? I said. Don't you work for a living anymore? Honey, after I see this man and give him something, we're on our way. Not bad. You're looking good. You're not looking bad yourself. Yeah, well, it's the good life I lead. Hey, uh, my viewer isn't working so good. You gotta put a dime in it. Here, try mine. Uh-huh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, this is clear. See you around. Yeah, take it easy. Isn't it all finished? Finished. they found in my pocket was for the cloakroom at Bay Meadows. It would get them one beat-up top coat I left at the track six months ago. <laughs> Afraid I might have trouble, I had stashed the real ticket in a safe place just in case. This caper started off to be a vacation, but as it turned out, I got my head pounded on and my heart turned around. I was almost getting bored with it. Almost, but not quite. Not while Diana was still around. Hello, darling. Aren't you glad to see me? You really set me up, didn't you? Are you sorry I did? It's Flighty, look. Flight 218 to Barcelona by New York and Lisbon. Miss D. St. James, Mr. M. Nash. Compliments of Barney Sadler. With a little bonus thrown in, huh? $500,000, Monty. All of it, all ours, a half million. In Spain, that's like 10 million. What happened to Harry Grant? I don't know. You don't care. Don't lean on me, Monty. When I first saw you, I didn't know if I could go through with it. And then I realized I was still in love with you and that you felt the same way about me. I knew I had to do it. It's a second chance for us, Monty. Sadler knew all about us. He knew you'd been assigned to the case. He knew that we once had an affair. He offered me the money, the whole 500000 if I'd set you up. I did it for us, Monty. For you and me. Monty. 
The plane leaves in an hour and a half. I have to make a couple of calls. And then we'll go. I'll meet you at the uh, ticket counter. Okay. Donald Green, please pick up white courtesy call. Miss Diana St. James? Yes? I'm Officer Stedman. You're under arrest. So, that was that. The government got the books and Barney Sadler, too. They also got to keep the money. Harry didn't need it. He was found floating in the bay a few days later. Very, very dead. As for Diana, I knew I'd never forget her. I also knew I'd never find another one like her. But then again, I wouldn't want to. I couldn't handle another one like her. No, thank you. But I wouldn't tell that to the boss. <laughs> 